You've heard about the show Between Two Firms. Well, this is Between Two Tiffins. As we discuss the availability of RV parks large enough to accommodate big rigs, that's coming up. everyone, so glad you've tuned in. Today we have a special guest to help with our topic. Please welcome fellow YouTuber Belle of Belle's Ride. Welcome and thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Belle brings another perspective of what it's like being a full-time RVer in a big rig setup. And many of you have asked about our experience as it relates to the availability of RV parks with sites large enough to accommodate a motorhome while towing a trailer. Daryl and I have had a lot of success with finding such places. We began towing a trailer in February when we departed Georgia, traveling to Lodi, California to meet up with you and Andy. As we traveled across country, there were several places we wanted to visit. The first was the stockyards in Fort Worth, Texas. So we simply searched the RV sites to accommodate our size rig and found a KOA just outside of Fort Worth, Texas with 80 foot sites. Continuing west, we wanted to visit Carlsbad Cavern National Park in New Mexico. Again, we found a KOA in Carlsbad with 70 foot sites. We actually like KOA because in their filter search, they have a category of motorhome towing, which quickly provides results of which KOA in the area can handle our size rig. After New Mexico, we traveled to Winslow, Arizona, so we could stand on the corner of Renzo, Arizona, and again found a KOA that could handle our setup. Our next stop was in Las Vegas, and then on to Flag City Resort in Lodi, California, which had big rig sites available. And that's where we met up with you and Andy. <laughs> the next stop was to ride the Redwoods of California, which took us to Eureka, California. The RV park there accommodated us. Then on to Astoria, Oregon. Again, had sites for big rigs, as did Bay Point Landing in Coos Bay, Oregon. And now in Brennan, Washington, which is our first park where we had to disconnect the trailers, but they did have trailer parking for us. So Belle, Daryl and I have been only towing the trailer for about three months. You and Andy have been doing it for a couple of years. What have been your experience in finding RV parks to accommodate your trailer? Clay, this is our first motorized RV. Like you and Daryl, our yep. last one was the Momentum as well. Right. But we figured that going full time during our planning that it just wouldn't be the right RV for us right. moving forward. So we got this one and a trailer for our toy. The first six months of full time, we crossed the United States three times. Wow. And our success rate with this method of looking for RV sites, 90% success rate. It's just incredible so well that we haven't even had to disconnect until we got back to California where we met up with you guys. The site right before meeting <clears throat> with you was our very first time of disconnect. Since we've been together, this is this, our first time yeah. together having yeah. to disconnect. So I think by the time Daryl and I leave you all, we would have visited some 18 RV parks and we would only have to disconnect about three or four. So that's that ratio is really not bad. Right, the success rate of finding RVs like this is really pretty high. So can you share with us the process of how you find these RV parks? Sure. I use Campendium primarily for my search engine, really. And it's super user friendly. I love the app. When you open it up, you could put a map on and of the United States and zero in to where you want to travel. And for us, I don't like to travel more than 350 miles a day. Knowing the route that we want to take and where we want to end up, I will search that area on the map and all these little trailer icons will pop up. Other icons will too, like uh, dry camping and state parks and that kind of thing. So, but I'll zero in on the little trailers and I will click on every single one of them and kind of take a mental note on which ones are my favorite. Once I open it up, I check for a couple things. First, is it big rig friendly? Then is it uh, pet friendly? Okay. And third, I confirm that it has 50 amps. So once it has all of those three things, then I move on to my next part of the, the search. Mm -hmm. I'll scroll down to the bottom and look at the pictures because the pictures that are added 
are mm-hmm. from other RVers. Oh, good. Full-time yeah. RVers, weekenders, all types of RVers. And they upload those pictures instead of, you know, going to the website and it's the campsites. Pitch, pictures. Own pictures, so yeah. So it only shows all the beautiful things, somewhat like a magazine. Right. So I like to look at the, the pictures from other RVers. And then if I like it, then I continue to the reviews. And then after that, I give them a call. I talk to a real human on the phone. Then I start asking questions about if, it, if we do have to disconnect, do they have an auxiliary parking? Are the sites wide enough right. for them to be side by side? And if they're willing to work with us, like this place here, this is a very small RV park. When I called and spoke with the owner, Summer, she was incredible with helping us. And she said, you know, if you're okay with it being disconnected, mm-hmm. that we could park it where they normally park the fishing boats. And perfect site for us that we could make this little courtyard for our yeah. adventure. So it was yeah. lovely. That's just how I did it for the entire 18 different Stops. RV parks that we're going to yeah. be visiting. So that sounds like a really good system that you have, Belle. Do us a favor and leave a comment below or on how you find your RV parks. We would love to hear from you. Well, hey, we hope the video has been helpful. As you can see, finding an RV site for a big rig is doable. Hey, it may not always be your first choice. Sometimes it may not be your second choice, but they are out there. Until next time, be well and stay safe.